Good morning. Good morning, Mama. How you doing? Happy 5.05 a.m. Yeah, it's early, but I'm glad you were up. Nice to see you, Mama. You want to hear a story? A story? Yes, please. I love a good story. Let's see, I'll find a good story okay. here. Um, so, this story is written by Dada. She published her name and phone number right here in the book. And this is her story. My dad tried to have me abort it. Let's see. Some neighbor boys molested her. And at 13, she tried to commit suicide. And she lived in a foster home when she was 15. And then at 16, she ran away. Hmm. What is it, buddy? Do you gotta go to the bathroom? Yes, I do, and I'm sorry to interrupt. You can do the story after, hey? Yeah, let's go outside. Ooh, it's still dark. In the dark, that's when the war starts. No distractions from my lonely heart. In the dark, the silence opens bars. Stitches tear, I'm bleeding out. Every failure is another punch. But this coffee sure is hitting the spot this morning. Am I not good enough? Mm. Try to breathe, but the fear and the doubts fill my lungs. In the dark, that's when I fall apart. Got your granny. Oh, yeah, there it is. Eat that granny. That's a good boy. Yum, yums. Oh, no, I'm going to read you this story, okay? Here we go. When I was in my mother's womb, my dad tried to have me aborted by pushing my mother down. Not being wanted by my biological dad and too close in age to my brother, I felt like a burden all my life. At age five, however, after going to Good News Club, I woke up one summer morning, knowing there was a God and he had me and that he had put me in a wonderful co country. So I got saved. I felt his eye on me often. Even after some really bad things happened to me, I had holes in my bookshelf walls that people watched me through. Also, a relative and some neighbor boys molested me. Then an old man, who was supposed to be a Christian, also molested me. After I got older, I tried to fix the holes in my wall and stay away from the bad boys and men. At 13, I tried to commit suicide. My brain was just going too fast. I couldn't sleep, and I wanted to stop thinking and hurting. I just ended up getting my stomach pumped. <sighs> I lived in a foster home when I was 15. And after nine months, I moved back home. Then at 16, I ran away with my boyfriend, who drank and did drugs. I was smoking two packs of cigarettes a day. He even thought of putting me on a stripper pole to earn extra money. That didn't happen. We were in Canada for nine months until one day he hit me and said I couldn't sing. I begged him to take me back to Washington State I promised I wouldn't leave him. I lied. Soon after we got back to Washington, we were smoking marijuana. One night, and I thought my boyfriend was the devil himself. I couldn't have, have him look at me or talk to me. Just hold me. The next day, my mom came with a letter from an old friend telling me I should leave this guy. The letter writer didn't know what was going on. I packed my things and went home that day. I rededicated my life to the Lord and got rebaptized. And I enrolled in a Christian school and got my high school diploma. I also went to a Christian music festival where I met my future husband. 
My husband's 10 years older than me and has two kids from a previous marriage. And on our honeymoon, we went to see his kids. The oldest taped him to the ground, wanted daddy to stay. When we got in the car, I cried and cried because I was only 18. The options were to die or divorce this man. His daughters were so young. When I was 20, I spent a week begging God to take my life because I knew I was going to mess things up. At the end of the week, I heard a loud, clear voice audibly say, No. And in my heart, I felt the Lord say, Don't ask me again. I felt that if I asked again to die, I would have gotten a spiritual spanking. So I stopped. And Abba did something else. When I was 21, we were living in Hawaii where my husband taught at a public school. I trusted and prayed for forgiveness. I had a dream where Jesus was talking to his disciples about me. There was an angel standing beside me. Then I was in my bed and Jesus walked through the wall of our house. He said, as he did, as he said to me, if you follow me, I'll make you a fisher of men. I jumped up from my bed and said, where are you, Jesus? The Holy Spirit was across the room with his arms open to me very faintly. It was 5 a.m. So we decided to leave Hawaii. I was pregnant with our second son. I returned to my parents' house. One day I was reading the Bible and Psalms 118, 17 through 18 leapt off the page and burned itself into my brain. I will not die but live and proclaim what the Lord has done. He has chastened me severely but not given me over to death. My husband and I went to Israel in November of 2012 and were baptized in, in the Jordan River. I was getting ready on the November of 2014 to go to a second time to Israel when Jesus came to me in an early morning vision and said, Miriam, Miriam, that's my Hebrew name. All your sins are forgiven. He smiled at me big and was happy with me. This was on the Jewish holiday Yom Kippur, the day of atonement or day of forgiveness of sin. I have had many trials and tribulations since then. <clears throat> sometimes I do well, and sometimes I mess up. God always patiently sees me through it all. My husband and I have three beautiful children plus two lovely daughters, and we have two granddaughters. We've been married for 38 years. I've had some illnesses, but even then, is they're being overcome. Satan cannot take my life. God knows the number of my days. I'm 56 and still going strong for Jesus. I was complaining to Father God a bit that I haven't been successful lately fishing for men even though we plant heavenly seed and water throughout our neighborhood I believe the real life stories book is an answer to my prayers I'm very excited to be sharing my story with you again that's from Donna there's your phone number if you want to talk to her Did you like that story, buddy? Yes, it was very good. Thank you so much for that. Okay. Mm.